When you hear the word peace, what comes to mind? You might picture some hippies from the 1960s waving peace signs, or maybe you imagine sitting out by the ocean waves to find a moment of peace and quiet. Or perhaps you think about the headlines or comments you just read on social media and wonder if making peace is even possible. Peace is tricky, right? After all, you don't have to look very hard in our communities to see the damage that kind of anger can do. It's the reason fights break out on the basketball court. It's the reason bullying is a critical issue in schools everywhere. It's the reason why you've stopped reading the comments on social media. The truth is, there are a lot of people who are walking around angry. Somehow, they grew up and missed a simple principle that is critical to life. Life is better connected. Getting along with each other and keeping the peace requires us to set something aside or give something up for the sake of a lasting relationship. A relationship that is most likely more important than whatever caused the fight in the first place. Simply put, peace will cost you something. And the sooner we help kids understand this idea about peace, the better chance they'll have at getting along with each other, even when the stakes are high. We define peace for kids as simply proving that you care more about each other than winning an argument. And we define peace for adults the same way. The work of making peace can be hard. It often requires taking the first step towards justice and reconciliation. It might even involve letting go of something, even if it's just a little bit of your ego. But just think what could happen if we taught kids how to pursue peace in a way that honors God. As we look at scripture, we can see how peace is something near to God's heart. Even when people chose to break their relationship with God, God continued to make a way to fix that relationship through Jesus. And because we reflect God's image, making peace with others should be a priority for us as well. That's why we're taking the month of March to highlight some of the passages in the Bible and help kids understand more about how they can make peace with others. We start the month by looking more closely at our memory verse for the month in Romans 12, 18, where Paul writes, if possible, live in peace with everyone. Do that as much as you can. This is a big challenge. Do as much as you can to live in peace with everyone. Paul was stressing how important it is for us to do everything in our power to fix what is broken and make connections. After all, this is what God did for us through Jesus. Bottom line, make peace whenever you can. Then in week two, we head to Genesis 13 and find an interaction between Abram and his nephew Lot. We read how God blessed each of their families with a large amount of flocks and herds, so many that the land they were on couldn't sustain all of them. The workers on each side were fighting and Abram and Lot knew it was time to separate. Although God had promised Abraham the land of Canaan and that he could live wherever he wanted, Abraham allowed Lot to choose where to live first. Abraham let go of the best land in order to make peace with his family. Bottom line, you can show you care by letting go of what's fair. Then in week three, we check out 1 Samuel 25, where we discover a story about a woman named Abigail. Her story starts with King David, who was furious with Abigail's husband, who mistreated David's soldiers. David decided to get revenge. Abigail intercepted him with gifts to apologize for her husband's actions. Her peacemaking skills stopped something that could have turned out horrible. Even though she was not responsible for her husband's offense, she realized she could play a role in making peace. Bottom line, you can help others make peace. For weeks four and five, we pivot a bit to focus on Easter. On Palm Sunday, we'll remember how God promised a savior, a Messiah that would rescue God's people. By this time, the promise was hundreds of years old. But then Jesus showed up. God's promises were finally coming true. 
And when Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, just like a prophecy foretold, they celebrated and worshiped Jesus. Of course, this all turned out different from what they expected, but what Jesus did was even better. Bottom line, Jesus came to be our savior. We finish up March with the huge Easter Sunday celebration, the day we celebrate that Jesus is alive. God went to great lengths to make peace with us. All the promises are true. Everything that Jesus said and did led to this moment. He paid the price for our sin on the cross and came back to life, making it possible for us to have peace with God forever. This is something to celebrate. Bottom line, Jesus is alive. Peace comes down to this. If God was willing to send Jesus to make peace with us possible, what are you willing to do? What connections or reconnections are you willing to make? Sometimes you have to do what it takes. Sometimes you have to be willing to give up something. Sometimes you have to get involved if you want to be a peacemaker. The point is, when you make peace, you make others understand they matter more than winning an argument. Let's help kids grow up and learn to do whatever they can to fix what's wrong between them and someone else. Let's help them learn to make peace a priority in their life.